before we uh, move from being dry and we go into doing all the wet stuff, we are gonna uh, put a, change the helmet up a little bit and put a helmet on that has the actual cord and an actual connection so you can practice that and show you that the muscle memory that we're teaching you is gonna work. Does that make sense? The reason we don't use an actual plug uh, cord into the water is that it's an extra step for the diver. It makes sense, there's an absolute extra step for them. We don't want them pulling a, a buckle and then trying to find that thing that could be wrapped around you a hundred times. Does that make sense? So for safety, this is why we simulate it this way. But I'm still gonna show you that the muscle memory works. The biggest thing about this chair that is different than the, than the like if you want to go buy an actual chair right now, is that the chair has a buoy in front right here and a buoy in the back. So the only access to the actual person inside is through the sides. And that, and that didn't sit very well with me. Also, the emergency release for those is on the very bottom of the chair, meaning that the person that's there to help you out is not holding the emergency release. Does that make sense? So we took the, that whole thing and just put it up here in the front and made this giant space for your diver to be in there. The other thing that we noticed that was pretty common in water, in water egress classes was that your diver or your safety person wasn't really a diver. It was a guy with a mask and snorkel holding their breath watching you well that's a problem because when they need air they're going to get air and you're still on the water strap does that make sense so we changed that we actually put a helmet on these guys we put a full face mask uh so that way you can't do anything to their air okay that way they, they don't become a victim they're there to just pull your head above water so you can kick them scratch them do whatever you want to them they're going to still be there we still practice losing air so I take their mask away and they're still there to do what they need to do. So we practice worst case scenario for all of that stuff. Fair enough? Uh, we practice people hung up in the chair or people hung up in the simulator, which in eight years, was, it's never happened. It's never happened, but never say never. We always practice for that worst case scenario. If we had to do a cutaway, or put it air into your mouth. This is why we practice all this stuff before we go underwater. Fair enough? So, so we're gonna do all of that. We're gonna take your sight away one time in class today. Not in the water, we're gonna do it up here. Yep, I'm gonna cover your eyes up here when we're actually doing the coil cord so you can actually see that the muscle memory we're teaching you works. We don't take your eyesight in the water because the minute I put something over your face and you're in the water, your anxiety goes to 110. The reality is, is that we put cameras on these all the time. So I have hundreds of hours of everybody doing water underwater. They close their eyes. Unless you're that one weird person that makes out with people with their eyes open. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My vote. I knew it. What's your point? Hey, yeah. What's your point? I'd say that to kind of get something into your head. If you can open your eyes underwater, do it. Make sense? Like you may be able to see. And we'll give you a story that goes with that. And, and uh, again, we can do war stories all day. We teach you, we're gonna say stuff that's relevant to being here. Does that make sense? So here's uh, Lee Flight. Uh, they take off to go to an island, uh, one of the barrier islands up there over Fort Myers to pick up a patient, nighttime. Both medics are in the back. At that time, there were a medic-medic uh, system uh, and a pilot in the front and an EC-145, pretty big helicopters, one of the newest 145s at the time. Uh, and they actually, she lost her reference of uh, where she was at, the pilot, and uh, she actually ends up nosing it into the water it, and it flips in. They actually crashed pretty shallow. The pilot, out pretty quick. She's, and they were uh, so shallow that the helicopter's sunk, but she's able to step on top of the helicopter. All right, and she's a big lady, so she's on top of the helicopter. The uh, co-pilot side medic slid the door open and it was on top within seconds of them uh, doing, uh, uh, getting into the water. The medic on the, uh, behind the pilot, on the pilot side, uh, tries to slide the door open. And he notices right away that he slides, slides that door, he can't get his body through the door. It's, it's, uh, it's hitting something, it's hitting an obstruction and he can't get it open. And when you read his NTSB uh, report, it's like you're like holding your breath reading it. Cause it's like, he gets to the last bit of his breath and he, what he ends up doing is actually opening up his eyes. When he opens up his eyes, the, the, the stuff that was still lit up from the helicopter, the panel, he could actually see that the door on the co-pilot side was open and he cross-capped out and came out. Like, 
Here's the thing, mechanic step. What's keeping this slider from opening up? Does that make sense? And, and, and I tell you that I use that story very specifically to illustrate a couple points. Number one, open up your eyes. Number two, you have enough air to do a lot of things under there. You can hold your breath a lot longer than you actually think. Does that make sense? So that's the second thing I want to illustrate with that. Uh, the third thing I want to illustrate with that, guess what those guys did a couple weeks before that happened? They were in water egress training. Okay, so like that, there's definitely an, a, a tribute to that survival to those guys actually having good muscle memory to being in there. Uh, so open up your eyes, you know, try to remember this and uh, encourage yourself to come to training as much as you can for it. And like, get, the last thing I wanna go is get rid of the exit as soon as you can. Those guys really had no warning that they were going into the water. Actually, one of the last things that one medic said before they actually go in is, is it raining outside? That's how low they were to the water. So they were getting actual, uh, uh, it was hitting the, it was hitting the, uh, the, the windows on the side. Uh, if you do have warning, you get a mayday, get rid of the door, okay? You wanna get rid of the doors. You guys that fly in the front of, in that EC-135, have you noticed that there's no emergency way to get out of those doors in the front? There's no absolutely way. Stuff that's kept me up at night. One of the cool things that I've, because of this company that I've had the luxury to do, is that I get to go and sit in front of where the people that do these interiors and they let me just rummage through their stuff for days at a time as long as we go drinking afterwards and like I, I've seen just about every type of interior every door handle and stuff as new things come out I try to make myself available to go okay and I try to be there so I can do that and one of the things that we came up with is in that EC 135 is that if you're in the front seat what you want to do is when you get that mayday call you want to with your non reference hand Right, so opposite of the door. Reference hand means the way you're going out. Everybody with me? Okay, with your non-reference hands, pull that, no, that, uh, that uh, the doorknob up, okay? Lean into it, break that seal, and then bring that doorknob back down. So it doesn't close back up on you. 